Welcome to Discovering Disabilities in Dearborn. My name is Ali. I'm Rashad. And today we have the privilege of being joined by Ibrahim and Yasmin. Please tell us a little bit about yourselves. So we've, um, we live here in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Um, Ibrahim is 23 years old. He is diagnosed with cerebral palsy and autism. And um, we have uh, four children. Ibrahim is the eldest. And we have Mohammed, who's 21, Emily, who's 16, and Jamir, who's 11. And we're just your typical um, family with a special angel um, in the mix. And we're just trying to get by like everybody else. That's amazing. That's amazing. So you mentioned cerebral palsy and autism. Could you, a lot of us are familiar with autism, but tell us a little bit about cerebral palsy and uh, what impact it has on Ibrahim. So when he was born, um, he was born with the cord <laughs> wrapped around his throat and he was septic. Um, usually when you're born, you have APGAR scores and APGAR scores is zero being dead and five thriving. Ibrahim was a one. Um, because of the way he was born, he had seizures, he wasn't breathing. Um, so he was in, in the NICU for about 10 days where he was intubated and given medicine for um, uh, the seizures. So due to the traumatic birth he had, um, when he was about 11 months old, he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And um, years after that, um, when he was almost three, I noticed some oddities of things he was doing, and I asked for him to be tested for autism as well. So this diagnosis didn't happen right after the birth. So you said at 11 months, it, it basically took 11 months to officially diagnose him with cerebral palsy. Right, because he was, everything was delayed. So he would, he would sit up, but it was delayed. He would um, flip over, but it was delayed. Um, so we knew something was going on, but no one was willing to diagnose him at that time. Um, not till he was 11 months old. And I got a second opinion where they said, um, in order for him to get the services he needs, we need to label him with cerebral palsy. And Ibrahim, you're on camera. Could you say hi to our viewers? Hi, viewers. Okay, awesome, awesome. So how was it like in school for Ibrahim early on, in the early stages of his diagnosis and, uh, and his life going, going through school and meeting new friends? So in the beginning when I went, when he was three, they started sending him to school and I, I went to visit and I'm like, oh my God, there's no way Ibrahim's gonna sit still like these kids. And I was so scared of how he was going to behave or if he'd be able to handle it. But um, he went in like a champ. He's very, as you can see, social, very friendly. Um, he was in a POHI program that was for kids with cerebral palsy. Um, and then um, he did really well. He was, he's very polite. Everybody loved him. He's very social. He loves to be with people. He loves to talk to people. So he kind of just, I think I, I usually have the harder time with these things. I think the parent usually does. And I think the kids do a lot better than we expect most of the time. Um, so every time he's transitioned, you know, I would have anxiety about it and so worried, but he's done amazingly. Do you think him being social contributed to you starting that, you know, the TikTok uh, channel and, and, you know, going viral? Um, yeah, you know, it all happened by accident, to be honest with you. Um, during COVID, um, I was bored and I kept hearing about TikTok and TikTok and um, there's only so much baking and cooking you can do during COVID, right? So I downloaded it and um, I put up, he's always had a fan base. So he's always had my friends or my cousins. Mm -hmm. He's always had a fan base, like on my Snapchat and stuff like that. So I just posted one of his videos, just like, just like that. And I didn't think anything was going to happen with it. And it just, it went viral. And then another one went viral. What was the video? Do you remember that first the video? The first that one that went viral was when, um, so he used to wait for our neighbor's daughter to get off the bus and he would ride his tricycle and walk her home after school. And he was waiting for her. So that's, it, that's it's my, ver my language that I used because I, I said he was stalking her, but I didn't mean that. I just, I'm a very sarcastic person. I didn't think people were gonna pick up on it. You know, social media is very, um, I learned very hard, you know, um, because you have to be very careful about what you say, how you say it. And I, I said he was stalking the neighbor's daughter, but we're actually very good friends with them. Um, but he loves their family and they love him. So he would wait for Layla um, off the bus and he would walk her to the extent he's allowed to ride his bike. <laughs> and um, that's how, so that went viral. And then the next one went was, there was a TikTok challenge where you're sitting next to somebody and you kind of hit them with stuff until someone says something. So my sister-in-law did that with him 
and he's so in love with her, he would never say anything to her. So everybody, you know, that was very controversial because, you know, this young pretty girl is like hitting him in the head with, you know, her bag and stuff. But so it just, it was like a whirlwind, honestly. It just happened on its own. How does Ibrahim feel about his social media presence? Um, he loves watching his own TikToks. Um, I think he's his biggest fan. Um, and what's really cool is like wherever we go, people know who we are or him especially. So we get stopped all the time, whether it's in Target or Kroger um, or the mall. And um, they uh, stop him and he loves it. He talks to them, but he doesn't understand. I don't think he understands fully um, that he's famous. When you say he doesn't understand fully, what, what things does Ibrahim understand when it comes to social interactions and just being around people? Um, Ibrahim is very self-motivated. That's one word I would use to describe him. If it's about him, he's all about it. If it's about his routine, um, something that he wants, he's very self-motivated. He loves attention. Um, he loves talking to people, especially, you know, beautiful young ladies. He's definitely a ladies man. Um, and, you know, if he sees somebody he likes, he starts up with the compliments. He starts, you know, complimenting their rings or their, oh, he's big time, big time. And, um. So he, but he just loves being with people and people watching and um, it just, it, it's his personality it just radiates. I really believe he just radiates uh, attention. I want to go back to the diagnosis of autism. Uh, when you said he was three years old, you ended up seeing some signs. Tell us a little bit about those signs that you saw and what was your motivation to, to uh, you know, see, him, uh, see a doctor after that? So um, originally he started like flicking the lights on and off in the house and just on, off, on, off. And then um, he would, you know, watch the door being opened and closed. He just was fascinated with things that were kind of odd. Um, and uh, autism was, it was there, but it wasn't as um, prevalent now. It wasn't talked about as much. You know, we're talking 23, you know, about 20 years ago. And um, I called the school and I said, you know, I think my son's autistic. I was at the time, I was an English major and psych minor, so I was going through my psych books. He's my first kid, so I didn't know what to expect. So I would go through my psych book and read like, read what I think he has. And um, at that time, that's, I had him evaluated by Children's Hospital and the school. And um, they both evaluated him. And the hospital says we're not confident to label him as aut autistic because of his cerebral palsy, because that, you know, would interfere with the testing but the school said we do believe he's autistic and he'll you know that he'll be taken into the ai program so it took me like a good possibly like year to grasp it and to figure out you know what i should do and that's when i you know started looking up um aba therapy and i put him in very intense therapy um when that summer how do you feel that therapy affected him do you feel like there were major improvements in his behavior stuff like that so ABA therapy is very controversial. Um, I believe in it. There's a lot of parents who don't and a, a lot of people who have autism that um, think it's like a form of abuse or a form of um, that it's not like a good thing to do. I personally love it. Um, during the therapy, I was trained to work with him. Um, and um, it that during that process, I taught him through ABA how to read, how to categorize, um, sequencing, um, directions. So to me, it was amazing because um, he was a very, already very bright. So enabled to, it enabled me to enable him to do things that he needed to do, like is learn how to read. So to me, I believe it was beneficial. He even did it when he hit, um, we did it for years and then um, he went back in about 18 years old and we did it some more like to do more life skills, like how to shower himself. Um, we're doing money. Uh, we were doing, um, being out in public, you know, if he needs help, how to recognize like hospital signs, stuff that, you know, because our, our kids don't learn like the typical children and ABA really gives you a way to teach them, I believe. He's learned some of those skills in schools, in the school too. They, uh, he's done sewing, you know, he's done cleaning. Yes, does yes. he ever bring those home and, and practice them at home? Absolutely or? not. He does not clean <laughs> at home. He tells me at school, I wipe tables, I wipe chairs, I swept, I'm like, you don't even pick up your dish <laughs> after dinner. Um, but, you know, he does, I give him t tasks at home to do, like pick up laundry baskets, take it, put away some of his clothes, stuff like that. Um, 
of course, you know, kids are always better at school, right? They're always on task. And I think because school's so, so routine oriented, that, that's why he thrives in it. Because there's a, a, a list of what he has to do, what time it is, and he does really well with that. Ibrahim, did you go outside today? It was yeah. good weather. You did? Yeah. Nice. Awesome. What did you do outside? I played outside. Played outside? Yeah. Awesome. What do you like to play outside, Ibrahim? Play football. Football? You do? Yeah. Oh, really? Who do you play with? You play with your brothers and sisters? Yeah. Sister? Yeah. yeah. And I play with mom's phone. You play with mom's phone? <laughs> so Ibrahim has a lot of abilities that he learned from ABA therapy and sh like Shirley in school as well and from these different Absolutely. things. But it seems like he had a hidden ability that yeah. we discovered when we were off the camera. Yeah. Um, and we just want to show it to our viewers. So Ibrahim, we're going to give you a date and you have to tell us what date that is. Okay. So let's start with my birthday, April, April 30th. What day is that? Sunday. Okay. Amazing. Rashad, you want to test him? What about my birthday? December 3rd. Sunday. Amazing. Amazing. That's, that's remarkable. What about July 4th? Tuesday. Awesome. I, I know people who practice that stuff. Uh, the guy behind, uh, <laughs> the guy managing our camera work actually, you know, learned how to do that mathematically so for him to know that. Yeah, people know. ask me, how does he do it? I don't know if he memorizes the calendar or if he figures the days and of what day it was last year and adds a day each year. I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of times um, people who are autistic have like a special talent or ability. Mm -hmm. And I, he has a great memorization. He's like a, sometimes and he's like a live GPS. And the text. Right. So it's really good with directions as oh well. Oh yeah. Oh and yeah. I gotta he take him on take my car, car ride today yes. as well. That would be. He, he could take you from here to my parents' and house in Cleveland. And oh, yeah. smaller. I have a question. So um, I've noticed from you know the several videos on social media that he's very like good with spatial awareness and how to use his body. A lot of people, you know, I, I see a lot of comments saying like he could be shaky at times and things like that, but. I, I watched a few videos where he was like eating, for example. He knows exactly where he wants to go. Uh, you know, like the fork, perfect. Uh, it was his chicken, I think he was eating yeah. in one of the videos. And then even when you bought him that new pair of glasses, like he opened the box, like he knew how yes. he wanted to open the box. He knew how he wanted to pull out the glasses. Is that something that he learned or something that he picked up over time? Or So you're talking years about? of therapy. Okay. You know, um, wherever there was a therapy, I was there. Um, from his diagnosis at 11 months, the exact next month we started, once we got in the books, we were OT, PT, speech, um, throughout his whole life. Um, if there was a alternative therapy, we used to even um, stay um, in uh, Utica and 26 Mile and Shaner, I think that's Utica. I would stay there Monday through Friday for an alternative therapy that's um, from Hungary. And there was a woman there that would work with um, a small group of children who have cerebral palsy and, um, I put him in research studies um, at Children's Hospital. I mean, we were doing like nine hours of therapy a week at one time. So wherever there was a will, there was a way for me. I, I worked really hard um, with everything because I just didn't want to leave a stone unturned. And um, it's hard as a parent because you're exhausted and you try to find everything. And, and you have to remember, I keep saying back then, like it's so long ago, but it is kind of long. We didn't have the internet we have now. It wasn't easy to get on the, you know, we didn't have a phone to Google things. So it was really, we had to put in a lot of work to find these things. So um, along with school, he was doing therapy. Um, we were doing therapies in every hospital that we were with at the time. And then we did a lot of work with him afterwards. But honestly, it was just a lot of it was a joint effort. Um, the therapists through school are amazing. Through Durban Public Schools were amazing. Till now, we have great people that work with him. Um, so it was just a lot of a lot of running around, a lot of running around and finding things. We we do horseback riding, therapeutic horseback riding, which is great for his trunk and for his um, you know um, stature. Like you know the way he sits on a horse is amazing. You know, and the funny thing is, is he'll ride you know the horse this huge horse but he's afraid of dogs and cats <laughs> you know so it's uh it's uh and he would hug his horse and tell him thank you for the ride you know and so he loved it who's your favorite horse bro him you have a name does Remember, it have a name what was your horse's name major 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 mm -hmm. nice so you like horses ibrahim yeah you don't like dogs or cats no okay are you good at riding horses yeah you gotta teach me can you teach me uh, give up, give up. <laughs> <laughs> 
the good one. So you're clearly very involved as, as his mom and, you know, running around, putting him in research studies, all of that. So it seems like it's shaped your, your family dynamics. How has it affected his siblings um, and just the family as a whole? You know, I get asked, like, oh, how did you explain to his siblings um, that he's special? I never had that talk with my kids, really. Right. Um, it's just they knew, like, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think they see how his dad and I care for him and they just follow suit. Um, but we are, we're, we try to do, like, we're trying to be even and fair with everybody. Of course, Ibrahim is special. You know, he gets certain things that are um you know, it's not the same, you know, direct the way we talk to our other kids or the way we deal with the other children, but um, we treat him normal, you know, like he annoys the heck out of his siblings and the siblings annoy the heck out of him. So it's, that's what I think people like loved our page because I just uh, posting organic things, things that are happening, you know, him and m his brother, his 21 year old brother, you know, uh, wrestling, uh, taking each other's clothes, uh, so it's all like, you know, the typical thing. We don't uh, like let it be a difference really. Um, does it affect us? Yeah, because sometimes, you know, Ibrahim wants something the other kids don't want to do. If we're picking dinner, we have to kind of go where he wants to go. Um, uh, if, if there's something written in the calendar that, you know, we have to cancel, it's very, sometimes very upsetting for him. So, you know, it affects all of us and, and the kids take it in stride. Um, they do well with it and they know how to handle him for the most part. But it's not all roses, right? I mean, there's times that he has temper tantrums. Um, of course, I'd never post that. Um, and that's scary, right? I mean, he's six foot, almost six foot two, six foot three. And he can take any of us down if he wanted. Um, so it, it is difficult. And the kids know to be sure, you know, to stay out of his way when he's upset, you know? Okay. So it's hard, but they don't know any different, right? Because this is in our life and we try to work with it and, and do what we can to make everybody happy. And we do, my husband and I always try to do special things with each child. We travel with each one individually. We have our like, you know, my daughter and I have our lunch and mall dates and we travel alone. Ibrahim and I did a Turkey trip together. I did a um, Dubai trip with my youngest son. So we try to switch it up with everybody. I heard you're not allowed to go on the Cleveland trips though. Yeah, so <laughs> am I, can I go visit Fifi and CD in Cleveland? No. No, yeah, yeah he, he only wants to go to my parents. They're his parents. He says they're his parents, so. So Ibrahim has been holding your hand and, and touching your hand. Can you tell us a little bit about those, those behaviors? You know what, I feel like it's when he knows I'm not giving him the full attention okay. um, that he's, his way of, you know, keeping me, trying to engage with him. Um, is, and he likes to be annoying sometimes, right? <laughs> right? Right, let's see good hands. Let's see good hands. Okay. Very Rahim, good. do you like going to Cleveland? Yeah. What do you do in Cleveland? I watch TV. You watch TV? <laughs> <laughs> and you spend time with Teta, right? And yeah. Jindo? Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Ibrahim, what's your favorite food? Because mm. I know you make the decisions on the menu and where you're going to eat. So what's your favorite food? Hash browns and bacon. Hash browns and bacon. Hash browns and bacon. You have those at Flapjacks, huh? Yep. No, we're sitting, we're talking now. Mm. How about ice cream? Yeah, chocolate. You like ice cream? Yeah. He loves chocolate. Okay, didn't you see him slam the ice cream <laughs> you just brought him? <laughs> um, I have a question about like, so so you mentioned Brahim is the oldest yes. of your children, right? Okay, was there ever, I don't want to use the term fear, but was there ever like a, a feeling of maybe discomfort or, or some kind of thought in the back of your head that, you know, Brahim has autism and cerebral palsy, he was born with those conditions, that your other children might have those conditions? And how did you kind of um, address those thoughts if you had them? Oh yeah, definitely. When I got pregnant with my second son, I was terrified, beyond terrified. Um, because of the traumatic birth I had with him, um, it was I was only 22 years old and um, literally had a baby, my stomach cut open to take out a baby that was dying in my stomach. Um, to do it again, I didn't think I could, but Allah wrote what he wanted and gave me Muhammad. And um, it was the biggest gift for um, Ibrahim. Um, so yeah, did I fear, you know, having another autistic child or a child with, um, at special uh, needs, of course. Um, I think we take for granted, you know, having healthy babies. Um, 
Uh, but I, you know what? I think when you have a strong faith, which I, I try to, um, and you believe what is written is written and what's going to be. Um, in fact, the last my last son is there's quite an age difference from him and his sister. I just I thought to my I told my husband I think I want to have one more, and he says you know no we have the three let's just keep it like that. And I said no I I feel like Ibrahim will need more support and th what better way than giving him another sibling? And I just literally prayed. I prayed to God. I said, I don't care if it's a boy or a girl, just let me have a healthy baby. And um, I have friends that have multiple children with special needs, and I applaud them. It's really hard. I have friends who adopted children with special needs. Now I feel like they are the most remarkable people in the world to choose it and to know it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's life-altering. It's truly life-altering. Um, it puts life into perspective. Um, you you see sometimes you see sometimes I feel like I'm emotionless because when I see somebody that has an issue and I'm like really that's really not an issue, um, you know having even with Ibrahim like um, I remember when he was a couple years old and I was driving out to uh, Novi for therapy mm -hmm. and I was crying because um, he was like four years old or five years old and um, I was crying because I just wanted to be a typical mom right I wanted to be at the mall in the play area not going to therapy three times a week. And um, I cried all the way there for myself, and I cried for him. And um, when I got there, I saw a mom of twins, and the one son was perfectly fine, and the other one was in a wheelchair and couldn't even lift his hands. And then I just hid behind the magazine, and I cried for that mom. And I said, wow. I said, thank God, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, that um, I have what I have, and Allah gave me what he gave me. Um, so it is hard, and you do worry, but it's there's a plan for everything, and um, you know, it, it made me a better person. It made me a stronger person. It made me a humanitarian, a better uh, Muslim. It made me a better mother. <laughs> it made me a better friend, I think too. And it gave me a lot of patience, as you could see. Everything uh, said good. I Anything? did see um, on a previous podcast that you're on Moments of Joy. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that, you know. Um, having Ibrahim was a gift from God, uh. kind of reinforcing what you were just saying right now. Um, were there ever like moments throughout his life and him growing up that made you think about like, this is a gift from God and, and like further kind of uh, emphasized or reinforced that idea? Oh, absolutely. Um, they're angels. I think all our special kids are angels because they don't know any, you know, better, you know, they're, Mentally, they're, you know, a lot of them are still very young and they're, you know, he's 6'2 man, right? But he has uh, the mental capacity of a child. So his innocence is there. And um, I feel like um, a friend of mine, um, actually it's Ibrahim's friend's brother, called them Dufur um, Rahman. That's where I got the gift of uh, God's gift. He said, if God sent you a guest, would you not care for that guest in the best manner? And that really resonated with me because um, this is God's gift and he entrusted me um, to care for him. And I'm gonna try to my best ability. Am I perfect? No. And now sometimes I get things, oh, you're the best mom. I'm not the best mom. I get very upset. I curse, I yell, I scream, ask my kids. You know, my husband's like, record that and put that on TikTok. But we're normal. And I tell you, we're normal, we're normal. I get agitated. Um, I'd have my breakdowns before. Um, you know, there's times where I would just, when he was young, I would just sit and cry because if he was, you know, having a tantrum about something um, or I couldn't do something he wanted, um, it's it's hard. You know, no one's saying it's not. But um, in the end, you try to keep it all into perspective and you take it day by day. For me, I have to take it day by day because when I would think too far into the future, it would be very upsetting and um, depressing because, what if something happens to me? What if something happens to his dad? Rahim, what's your favorite bedtime story? Oh, should we tell them a bedtime story? Oh, April twenty first, we're gonna study at the gym and we're gonna have breakfast at IS. What's What's April twenty first? We're going to IS. I know, but what is that day? It's Friday. I know, but what is April twenty first? What is it? Why are we going to Sully and to go have breakfast? It's gonna be the. Yeah, Eid. 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 Eid.
Rahim was saying, let's say, and you are saying technique, you are saying technique. How about I tell you a story? What? Once upon a time, there was a princess named Yasmin. And she went to Cleveland to visit her parents by herself. And she drove on 90 and she got off an exit. What exit did I get off of? 159. 159 in Ohio. So, Yasmin, uh, you talked about religion and how it played a crucial part and taking it day by day um, and keeping things into perspective, really helping. Uh, but please tell us about some resources that were very helpful for you in managing his disability and um, any support systems you have or you would like to share with our viewers. Um, a lot of the times, the biggest support I found were um, other parents. Um, I would, I just would land in with these people through research studies, and I would meet other parents. And like I said, the internet was, you know, new at the time, so we really didn't have much access to anything. So um, it was other parents. It was the schools, um, the therapy, right? Definitely research studies, helping other parents, helping um, the schools. Um, and then when we did therapies, they would always direct us to things. So like even when he was younger, he learned to ride a bike finally when he, he didn't walk till he was almost two and a half, three years old. Um, the therapist told me about um, a, a place that gives out bikes. And the bikes, you know, are quite expensive. They're like 800 and up. And he, luckily he landed one. And it was nice, you know, so when he grew out of it, I gifted it to another special needs child and the insurance sent us a new one. So it was, it was all a learning curve um, and learning from other parents. And even till now, like his teachers now at, at this age, you know, when she has a special needs child, I told her, I'm like, hey, do you get this? Do you try this? So it's just, it's honestly it's just socializing with other parents and looking it up on the internet and um, it's getting all the information and just utilizing it. But a lot of it's the community. The community here is amazing. They're amazing with Ibrahim. They become more accepting. And I mean, we still get looks, right? Because he's sometimes he'll cover his ears and um, mumble and, you know, rock and stuff like that. But the communities, I think the communities come a long way of um, accepting um, special needs. And he's, he makes friends everywhere he goes. And ever since we started with social media, he has fans. I mean, him and his dad were out to lunch, and he's getting ice cream and French fries delivered to the table, and the bill's getting paid. And Amazing. my husband's looking around. He's like, what's going on? They're like, oh, my God, we're big fans, you know? So it's, it's really cool. It's really interesting. Yeah, you also definitely have a unique spot in our community regarding having a child with a disability because of that support system and from, from your you know, fan base. So uh, that, must, that must have helped. Oh, definitely. I mean, um, Detroit Furniture came out with their truck and, and but he's obsessed with big trucks and loves riding in them they pulled up took him for a ride down to his favorite place dick's bakery on sunday um we go into our favorite iceberg on wednesdays you know fans that follow iceberg know ibrahim and you know he has got a chair with his name on it so there's just things have really come a long way uh and i know like when he would stay with my parents you know um you know, we would take him to all the events and people would like, you know, be like, oh, well, you know, we have a special needs child or grandchild, but we don't really take him out. And, you know, when they seen us starting to do it, I think it opened um, the eyes to the community um, to, you know, bring out their children with special needs. And unfortunately, like Arabs, we shy away from it. It's looked maybe down upon, but I've only like had one time someone asked me like, why is your son like this? And she asked me in Arabic. And it was at Fairlane Mall when they had that play area, but he was very young and didn't walk yet, or he didn't even crawl yet, he commando crawled. And I said, that's the way God made him. And my friend wanted to like fight her. I said, don't fight her. I said, you know, sometimes people are just not educated. They don't know better. So I'd rather show them in a nice way, you know, um, that, you know, it's okay to ask. It's okay um, to say, come up to me and say something. That's very beautiful and really powerful that you know, you're on that opposite side of the spectrum where there are people with children with disabilities who trap them at home, don't let them go outside. But you're on the opposite side of things that not only are you taking him out, but people are coming up to him with positive reactions. Yeah, so much. completely destroying that that stereotype and that norm for people with disabilities. I think that's, that's very powerful. It is. Um, I get a lot of messages um, from parents so I was at a party um, a couple weeks ago, and this woman kept staring at me. 
And I'm like, you know, I said hello to everybody, and she just kept staring at me. I'm like, I'm like, do I know you? She's like, no, but I know you. And she goes, I actually messaged you about my daughter. She's special needs and so forth. And she goes, you actually messaged me back. So I always, so a lot of um, social media people turn off their DMs, and I don't. I, I leave open my Facebook, our TikTok, our Instagram. I leave, an, leave them all open. And if a parent or anyone sends me a message um, in asking for advice or telling me about their child, I respond to all of them. Wow. Um, just don't send me another video of someone else because I'm not going to sit and watch it. But <laughs> if, you, you're, if there's a parent that, you know, wants or any caregiver, anyone, even I have special needs, other people, special needs people messaging me. And I will respond, um, and I'll help as much as I can. I'm not, I'm just a mom. I tell them, I'm just a mom, but this is my advice. Um, I've talked to parents who are in denial that, you know, a, par a family member will tell me, please, you know, reach out to this, you know, their their child has something. And, and so I'd sit with this parent, and I'd tell them, you know, like, listen, you know, I know it's hard, and but the longer you wait to get intervention, the harder it's going to be because those first few years are the core of getting as much as you can get in. And that's when children make the most strides. Um, so if I feel free to message me. Um, I will try to help to my best, best of my ability. So I, I think uh, our viewers are definitely gonna benefit from this episode with all the advice that you're giving and just having this conversation. But um, as Yasmin said, feel free to reach out to her. That's, that's very kind of you. Um, I think this is a perfect time for us to take our break. Uh, but yeah, it's been great. Thank you. Hey everyone, thank you for listening. We hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. If you or someone you know would be interested in being a guest on the podcast, or if you have any feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on Instagram at Dream Dearborn, or on our website at dreamdearborn.org, or on our email at disabilitiesproject at umich.edu. Thank you. Welcome back to this episode of Discovering Disabilities in Dearborn with Ibrahim and Yasmin. Yasmin, I wanted to ask if there have been any moments during Ibrahim's uh, life so far where you had to kind of advocate for for him in educational settings or in medical settings and and how have you advocated for him if there was any yes definitely there's been times um unfortunately when you have a child with special needs you learn that sometimes it's not done about what's best for the child it's about um sometimes about money and where the funding is and how much things cost and um i don't think i realized that till i had ibrahim and he went to school um at times you know if you're not educated, you could be easily taken advantage of, right? So when I realized that Ibrahim has to get an IEP every year and there's certain rules and regulations, which I had no idea about them, I went to um, Wayne County and I took a class on what the do's and don'ts of IE IEPs, what's legal and what's not legal that they do when you're at them and what the school has to give and what your rights are as a parent and what his rights are as a student. So, um, I also work with, um, c we just had an IEP two weeks ago, and um, we have a advocate also that comes, and she was on the phone, and she listens to the IEP and, and gives her recommendations as well through Community Living Services. Um, she comes with, she call, like we meet with her once a month to make sure everything's on task and if we're having any issues or if there's any resources we want. So a lot of times there's um, places like Community Living Services that could help you um, advocate for your child and get the therapies they need. So, um, you are know, those services free? Yes, okay. they are. Sometimes I think there's small charges, but now that he's over 18, um, he's had it for years. Um, and sometimes insurance kicks in and I, I'm, I'm not sure of the logistics, honestly, but we don't pay for it. Now that he's 18, a lot of things are free. Um, so they, like she'll call in on the, uh, IEP, you know, she'll ask questions or if I have a concern, She'll look into it for us. Um, if there's a therapy I'm trying to get into, she'll help facilitate it. So like a caseworker? Yes, right? definitely a caseworker. So there's so many different um, places that help you with this and advocacies. Um, like I said, I did the IEP through um, Wayne County um, because there was things I realized that were being done that were illegal. Um, and uh, so just as a parent, you have to learn these things because sometimes you get taken advantage of if you don't know. Um, and everything in the IEP, you know, it's written in a certain way that, you know, they only get this much therapy um, a month. And it's, what is it, 10, 15 minutes? You know, it's not much. Wow. So as a parent, you have to try to advocate to get as many resources as you can. And they try hard. A lot of times their hand, the teacher's hands are tied as well, right? And it's not really up to them. It's, you know, the state laws that, you know, 
keep things geared the way they are. But for the most part, I've never had to like fight anything. You know, when he was a little bit younger, I wanted him to have his parapro. And if you know the right verbiage and you know the right ways and paths, you can get what you want. Right. right. So it definitely helped to take those classes. Of course. You know, you have to educate yourself. Um, yeah. The next thing I'm working on now is, and that's something that I've, I've known I've had to do, and I took a class through Dearborn Schools. They had a class about setting up um, trusts and um, a will, a living will for my kids. And it's something that it's hard to um, get yourself to do, right? To like sit down and think about when you're gone, how you want things um, taken care of. And it's big decisions about putting trustees over him and who will take care of him. And it's it's emotionally very difficult. So I, I'm in denial about it now. You know, sometimes as parents, we don't want to deal with things, but it's something that actually I was talking about today with a friend that I have to um, uh, seek. But usually the, the district will have um, classes um, to for parents to go to, and they'll bring uh, a, a, a special attorney to come and discuss it with you. There was classes at Dearborn on um, once he was turning close to turning 18, how to pull um, his state ID, how to um, either get a guardianship or um, power of attorney over your child, and we did that right away too. So before he 18, we pulled his uh, state ID, and then we did a power of attorney so that we can make decisions for him medically or financially. Beautiful. So growing up, did he attend public schools or any different kinds of school systems? He was always in the Dearborn Public Schools. Um, now that he's um, out of, uh, like he did school of completion for high school through Dearborn High, he goes to uh, Lincoln Park School for, um, it's called a transitional school from 18 to 26. So we're lucky here in Michigan that they can go to school up to 26. Other states only have it till they're 21. Um, and he goes to the school, which is really cool. It's an amazing school. They have a resale shop in the school that the kids run. And like he prices things, he awesome. hangs them. Um, he comes home with things and comes home with like old people glasses, you know, you know, so he, he really loves it. And they, and they, and depending on the child's ability, um, they like work. So there's some kids are really good with construction. So they make things and paint them and sell them in the resale shop. Um, some kids are good at the cash register. They'll run the cash register. He does, um, he runs, he works the cafe where he probably buys more than he sells, mm. but you know, he gets mm. his pop and his mm. candy or his mm. snack. So um, it's, it's his school is really amazing. And it has like, they do um, work programs where they take the kids. He was at one time working at um, Marshall's and he was the welcomer. So he'd oh. welcome you and say, welcome to Marshall's, you know, and, and, and so he loves that because it was perfect up his alley where he gets to talk to people. Um, then they go to bowling alleys and they'll clean the bowling alley or they'll help a banquet hall set up. So the school has a lot of cool things going on for them. Beautiful. That's amazing. I, I know you try to take things day by day and um, don't want to look too far in the future, uh, but what are your plans after he finishes uh, school uh, after 26 years old? Um, so he's going to always be out in the community. I mean, there's nothing about like that's going to change. He loves being out in the community. He loves being with people. I mean, if I can get him a, um, a job doing, um, you know, um, a door like as a greeter somewhere, you know, that, you know, is safe, I would love to have him work as a greeter. Um, I think that would be the ultimate job for him, you know, to talk to people. Um, and he could do like tasks. So at Dearborn High, even, you know, they had a program, the PACE program, where they would have jobs and they had steps that the kids would do. And he mm -hmm. did well with certain things, but he's only capable of doing so many steps before he gets mm -hmm. um, kind of bored um, and he's mm -hmm. over it. So uh, it'd have to be something socially where he's socially interacting. I'm not sure exactly where he'll end, end up, but somewhere I hope that he likes being and somewhere it's going to be fun for him. Yeah. Well, he's on the phone right now. Uh, Ibrahim, what are you watching on the phone? April 30th, highest shower. Oh, <laughs> He's nice. looking at my calendar. April 30th? April 30th, highest shower. It is. He's uh, looking no. at the calendar? Well, sorry? He, he's looking at the calendar? Calendar or like invites. He, okay. you know, he's my. Can I come to highest shower? So he like, looks through my phone to see shower. what I have going on. Then we go home. We have to write it all in the calendar and he has to what remind me of the day. What time highest shower? I don't know. You saw the invite. About 30. Okay, you saw the invite. You can do something with the boys while they're at the shower. Yeah. You wanna, what do you want to do when I'm at the shower? 
to us saying these. Are we gonna he, so he acts like he's going to take care of people. So when I, I was in Grand Rapids last weekend, he took mm. care of his dad and his brothers while me and his sister were gone. Yeah. Good job, Rahim. You like taking yeah. care of people, huh? Yeah, he takes care of his baba, right? That's nice of you, Rahim. He's a cool story. What's his favorite activity to do, to do just like in general? I know um, he likes to bother his siblings, waking them up, yes. <laughs> but that's a joy to him. Yeah. <laughs> he has a ritual every weekend. He wa opens his brother's door, checks on things, locks the door from inside, closes it. But his sister gets the special attention. She gets serenaded every Saturday and Sunday um, with whatever music is in his head. And he doesn't leave till she threatens to call um, their grandparents. And, uh, and then he'll, wa he'll give up. He'll walk away. Um, so yeah, he his he loves um, riding his bike, in the you know in the area, and everybody in our area knows him. I feel like he could run for office and he'd probably win. Um, he loves riding his bike. He loves going. Mindful. Yeah, I think <laughs> he'd do. Um, he loves running errands. Um, he loves like even after he comes from school, if you notice his videos, it's like where are we going next? So he just walks in. He didn't even take off his coat, and he wants to know where he's going next. So every day he needs basically some kind of ride, mm -hmm. whether we take him for a ride around the block, as he says, or we'll take him to um, to get ice cream mm -hmm. or yeah. just to Kroger to um, oh, shop. Um, so he, he just loves being out and about. I know we're getting pretty close to uh, Ibrahim's bedtime, uh, but I wanted to really hear what you have to say about some advice that you have for other parents with kids with special needs in our community. I would definitely say um, take it day by day. Try not to get overwhelmed. Um, don't burn yourself out because this we're in it for the long call. You know, um, it's it's exhausting mentally and physically. Um, and I think really it is is give yourself time away to recoup. Um, those little days that I get like going away from my with my daughter, you kind of come back refreshed and you can handle it all again and you're ready to take it on. So I think you, there's a lot of self-care for parents that um, is needed. Um, and try to find a good support system, whether it's with your family or friends, because it's hard, you know, um, to take your special uh, child to someone's house and not, you know, and feel comfortable to sit back and relax. And if you have people like that, you know, really hold on. Um, because it's hard, you know, when your child's sitting opening people's refrigerators or, you know, rocking back and forth or touching things they shouldn't be touching so you know it's surround yourself with good people that was tough for you at first oh yeah definitely and i how did you how did you overcome that so um actually a mom messaged me about that she said you know how do you take your child to people's houses and because um, her daughter wants to go up to their rooms and sit in their bedrooms and she wants to do things that are not customary right for other children to do I told her, find someone, and I, I actually offered myself and my home, and she's just a fan, right? Um, I told her, if you want to bring your daughter to my house, and we can try it. You know, she can walk through my bedrooms, do what she wants to do, but um, we can try to gear her to do more appropriate um, things, like sitting in the family room, um, bring her iPad, or things that are comfortable for her with her. So I offered, like I said, for her to come to my house and try it out and, and see and I've never, I've met this lady one time and we've just messaged. So I it's really hard because I remember leaving my own aunt's house crying when he was very young. And, you know, my aunt got upset. She's like, no, it's fine. You know, but as a parent, you want your children to behave in a certain way. And sometimes when they're, you know, have um, disabilities, you can't control it, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's difficult to get your children mm -hmm. to behave. You know, other children, mm -hmm. you can say, okay, don't do this or don't do that. But sometimes you can say those things to our special kids and they're still not going to listen. Or they'll throw themselves or cry, and, and then you have people staring at you, and then you feel uncomfortable. So, you know, it's, I think it, a lot of it is taking it day by day and consistency. Beautiful. All right. Ibrahim, do you have any plans this weekend? Um, what do you have this um, weekend? I have school tomorrow. School tomorrow? What about after? How about on Saturday? Take care of my dad. Take care of your dad? Friday night. Friday night. That's nice. Where, where are you going Saturday? Right yeah. Tell them what you're gonna do in the morning. To wake up early at six thirty. Mm -hmm. Six thirty? Why? To go with Muhammad. To go with Muhammad to Flapjacks? Yeah. Nice. What's your favorite food at Flapjacks? Hash browns bacon. Hash browns bacon. Okay. Do you like ketchup with them or no? No. You don't like ketchup with no. them? No. <laughs> so you just 
gonna go to Flapjack Saturday. Yeah. And then where are you going Sunday? Dick's Bakery. Oh yeah, Dick's Bakery. I'll no. take you. I can take you to Dick's Bakery. No, you already went. Please, I'll go with you. We're gonna be at the Salem Reunion. But you can go with me to Dick's Bakery. You're gonna be at the Salem Reunion. Okay. What's your favorite thing to get from Dick's Bakery? Cheese rolls out of bread for that bread. Wow. How about Iceberg? What's your favorite thing from there? Cheese sticks of grilled chicken and fries. Cheese sticks, grilled chicken and fries. Inshallah, we, we can have that. that. Sounds good, uh-huh. yeah. Actually, that's not even on the menu. That's special for him. Wow. Okay. My mouth is watering already. The <laughs> chicken isn't, but the, the what? special what? privileges. What? So do you want the guys to meet us at Iceberg on, on Wednesday? Yeah. And we can have dinner together? Yeah. Sounds good. So uh, does anybody have any final questions? Any what questions? questions do you have, Brahim? you have any questions for us? Yeah. What would you like to ask us, Ibrahim? I'm going to Cleveland, April 29th. April 29th, you're going to Cleveland? Yeah. What nice. day is that? Saturday. Okay. You guys usually drive to Cleveland in yeah, the car? Yeah, it's like a two, uh, two and a half, two hour, 15 minute drive. Are you yeah. going? So if there are no more questions, uh, I guess we'll take it to our dream segment now. Okay. Uh, the dream segment we ask at the end of every podcast uh, it could be about Anything doesn't have to be related to disabilities, but also it can be, of course. Uh, it's just in general, what is your dream about anything, your future outlook? While you think of that, I want to tell our viewers, um, in light of the conversation about religion and how it um, helped Yasmin, we do have an episode dedicated to uh, supporting individuals with disabilities um, through um, a religious perspective. So please feel free to go back to our earlier episodes um, and listen to that uh, episode. It was very informative. In season one. Season one. Season one. So I would say personally, my dream when it comes to my family is that Ibrahim is successful in life and that most importantly, that he's happy. Um, I pray that my kids, all of them live a good Islamic life and are successful in whatever they choose. And of course, the most important thing is everyone's healthy. Um, I try to be very realistic. I try not to um, dream certain things because sometimes you get heartbroken by them. So the basics are health for me and happiness. And I want that for my family and for everyone. Um, And also like to not have those anxieties and stresses of of typical life or even having a life with a special needs child. Um, Our life is wrapped around Ibrahim and of course all our children, but you know, they're all growing and going to their own path and you know, when my husband and I think about our future, it's always including Ibrahim and how he will always be with us, if God willing, that we are able to care for him and that we're on this earth. Um, so I feel like my other kids will be okay, God willing, and just as long as um, Ibrahim is happy, you know, I just always remember the day my husband, when they diagnosed Ibrahim with cerebral palsy, and I, I literally fell to the floor and I cried um, because of that name, cerebral palsy. Um, and he said, it doesn't change anything. Ibrahim is still Ibrahim, and as long as he's happy and he's thriving, that's all that matters. And that's how I feel like I view things, as long as he's happy. And if something simple is taking him, you know, on Wednesdays to Iceberg and Saturdays to Flapjack and Sundays the bakery, you know, or taking a ride in the Detroit furniture truck, if those things make him happy and I'm able to facilitate it, then I'm going to try to do that. Because when he's happy... I'm happy, and um, when he's content, I think you have a content a, as a parent in your heart. As long as your children are okay and healthy, I think that's the main issue, and that you're healthy. That's You've good. been doing a tremendous job making sure that he stays happy, and of course that you guys are happy as well. Uh, and so, um, inshallah, you know, your dreams become reality. Uh, I'm, uh, based off what you were saying, a lot of them, in my opinion, have become reality, and hopefully they continue to be a reality. Yeah. So. In light of that, I'll ask uh, Ibrahim one last question. Ibrahim, are you happy? Yeah. And I think you're doing an amazing job, Yasmin. Thank you. Thank you guys for having us. Yeah, it's, a, it's been a pleasure. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, uh, our viewers. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.